Hi everyone, my name is Eleanor and today we're going to be coding along with Scratch Junior. Feel free to pause the video so you can use it at a pace that works best for you. So let's get coding. I am using Scratch Junior on a Chromebook today. I have already downloaded it on the Play Store and it's on my toolbar. So I'm just going to click on the Scratch button and get going. I can push on the little house. And it's going to bring me into my main screen. I'm going to click on the plus to start a new project. So you'll notice a lot of different things going on on my screen. Today we're going to learn a lot of the different tools in Scratch Junior, but we're going to start by talking about this window here. And this is where the action happens in Scratch Junior. So everything that I code or characters or backgrounds that I use are going to appear here. This is what we call a sprite. So we usually call this the scratch cat, but today the story I'm talking about has a puppy in it. So I'm not going to be using the scratch cat. If you are using an iPad or a touchscreen Chromebook, you can simply hold and press on the character. If not, you can use your trackpad or your mouse and press and hold until you see the red X appear. And then you can simply click and remove the scratch cat from your stage. Because I need to add a character, I'm going to head on over here to the plus. And you'll see that Scratch Junior has lots of characters for you to, to pick from. In this case, I'm going to look through the animals and I'm going to find the dog. Now I like this dog, but he's not quite what I want him to be because the dog in my story is not these colors. So I'm going to select him and then click on the paintbrush up here in the top right corner. And once I've done that, you'll notice I have lots of choices. I'm going to select the paint bucket and I'm going to change the color of my puppy. So I'll pick this one right here and I'm going to click on him and change all the colors of my puppy. And I'm also going to give my character a name. Once I'm ready to go, I can click on the little check in the corner and it will drop my character into my stage. So there he is. I can move him around anywhere I want on the screen. For now, I'm just gonna kind of put him over here. Not too sure why I want him yet. Next, I'm gonna select a background and I know that this story is set in a snowstorm. So I'm gonna click on the background up here. And I'm gonna look through until I find the background that I want. Again, if there isn't a background that really meets your needs or is what you want, you could create your own or use that paintbrush to change it. But I'm pretty happy with this one here. It looks very wintry to me. So I'm going to select this one and click the check. And it's going to drop my background in. So here's my puppy. And now I need to tell Scratch Junior to have my puppy do something. So here's where we start coding. So down here, I have lots of different blocks to choose from. And whenever you code something, you need to be very specific with the computer or the Chromebook or the iPad or the program, telling it exactly what you want it to do. So usually we always start with a start block. So I'm going to click on the yellow block here. And I'm going to select this green flag. There's some other choices, but today I'm going to stick with the green flag. I'm going to drag and drop that right here. And you'll notice my puppy is right here and he's also highlighted up here. That means I'm working and coding my puppy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to add some characterization to my puppy. I need to show how he's feeling. So if you were thinking about what would you feel like when you were lost, you would probably be a little bit afraid. So I want him to show that. So I might have him say that. So if I look through my blocks, I can look right here on my character block 
And here is a block that allows my character to say something with a speech bubble, like in comic books. So I'm going to select that speech bubble and I'm going to drag and drop it here. And I can click here and change what my puppy's going to say. So I'm going to say, I want to go home. And because I really want to show that he wants to go home and he's a little bit afraid, I'm going to put an exclamation point. So the great thing about having the flag there is that I can use my flag up here to check my work as I go. When we code, it's important to always be checking and adapting and changing. And that's the great thing about coding. We can really change it to be what we want and be very specific about it. So I'm going to click my flag. Oh, so I'm pretty happy with that. So it's showing me he wants to go home, but I really want him to show his emotion. So I'm going to use another one of Scratch's tricks. Scratch Junior's tricks. And right here, there's a sound box. So I could pick a sound like this, like play the pop sound, but I actually want to record a sound. So I'm going to select this here. And it's going to bring up this window. And it's going to let me record a sound I want. So I'm going to try and record a sound like the puppy whining. So here we go. Hmm. I'm going to check if I'm happy with that by hitting play. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll hit my check and you'll notice that it's created the block for me here. So I can drag and drop that block right here. And again, I'm going to check my work. I'll hit the flag. I'm pretty happy. He's, he's definitely showing me he's not too happy. He's kind of scared. So next up in the story, his mother actually comes and finds him. So I need a second character in my story. So you're right. I'm going to head over here and I'm going to add a character. And to do that, I'm going to, again, hit the plus. So here, again, I'm going to head to the dog. And I'm going to hit my paintbrush. And I'm going to change the mom to look different, but I might want her to be a little different from the puppy, just so I can tell the difference. So I'm going to leave this little spot a different color. You could decide to make the puppy any color you want. I'm going to rename this character Mom. When you're ready to go, you can hit your check and drop the puppy right into your scene. Oops, sorry, the mom. So I'll move mom over here, right about here, because that's where I'm going to want her to probably start in the story. So here's my puppy, here's mom. But I have a problem, because I don't want mom to be in my story right away. So I'm going to ask Scratch to help me bring mom in when I want her to appear. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I have mom selected. So I see that I'm working with mom because it's orange. I'm going to give her a start block. I'm going to head over to my purple blocks for characters, and I'm going to ask mom to disappear. And then I'm going to ask mom to reappear. So watch what happens. So she disappeared and she reappeared. But that was really fast. So I'm going to ask that to happen, but maybe take a little bit of time to do so. So to do that, I'm going to head over here to these blocks, which we call kind of action blocks or weight blocks. So I'm going to grab this weight block and I'm going to drag it in between my two, my disappear and my reappear block. And I'm going to test it out. I'll hit my flag, see what that looks like. It's pretty good, but he's whining. I might want her to wait a little bit more. So I'll move my image up a bit so you can see what happens when I click here. I can change the amount of time that mom's going to wait. I'm going to ask her to wait maybe 45. Let's try that. See what that looks like. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. 
So mom appears and now I need her to get the puppy's attention. So I'm going to have mom say something. I could record something or I can have her say something. I'm going to have her say something. I'm going to have her say, there you are. I'm pretty happy with that. Now that was a lot of steps. So this could be a really great place to pause, keep the image on your, the screen and go through all the different blocks that I put in and find the timing that works for you and then hit play when you're ready to go to the next step. Great. When you're ready to go, now we need the puppy to notice mom and head over to her. So we're going to make the puppy move. So I'm going to click on the puppy here because now I'm going to be coding him. And I'm going to select my move blocks. I'm going to ask the puppy to turn around. So I'm going to select this one here and see what happens. Let's test it. Oh, so my puppy's turned around, but he's not quite as far as I want him to be. So I'm going to add in another one. And maybe I'll ask him to move three different steps. Let's see what that looks like. If I wanted to see that bigger, I could select this button right here and it will open my scene full screen and I can click my flag I might add just a little bit more I'll reset my scene here with this button and add my puppy, he's going to say, because he's probably really excited, he's going to say, Mom, like this. I'm showing how he's feeling. So let's try that again. I'm going to go full screen. So there we go. That's our scene from our storybook in Scratch Junior. Today, we've used a lot of the features of Scratch. We've selected a background. We've created two custom characters by editing them with the paintbrush. We've used a start block, a speak block. We've recorded a sound block. We've used move blocks, peer blocks, disappear blocks, and wait blocks. That's pretty impressive. If that's all you have time for today, you can stop here. If you have a little bit more time, you can stick around for what I call a level up skill in Scratch Junior. I thought to myself, I wanted to add a little something extra to my story or my scene because this storybook is really about a snowstorm. And I thought it was a shame that there wasn't so much snow coming down in my scene. And at first I thought, I could probably just go into my background and use my paintbrush to draw some snow in. But then I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I could get my snow to move on my screen? So here's how I did that. I went over to my plus to add in a character. And instead of selecting a character, I actually just clicked my paintbrush for a blank canvas. And this canvas is great because you can create your own characters and draw anything you want to really add into your scratch stage. I'm going to select white to create some snow. 
and I'm just going to create lots of little dots. You'll notice that I'm not really caring too much about how big they are. I'm just being creative about placing them all over. And that's the fun of Scratch Junior. You can be really creative about what you make. I'm gonna call my character Snow so I can find it real easily. And I'm gonna hit my check. So there's my snow and I'm gonna move it over here. But there's not quite enough snow, so I'm just going to go into my plus and I'm going to add the character again. And I can move that over. Oh, well, I'm pretty happy with where it is. Maybe just move it a little bit. And maybe one more. So now I have snow all over my scene. Okay, so now I want my snow to move. So here's how I'm going to do it. Again, because I need to tell it very specifically when to start, I'm going to put a start block, a green flag right here. Next, I'm going to head over to my character block. I'm going to ask my snow to disappear and then reappear. So let's see what that will look like. I want it to keep moving. So we're going to go on these red blocks that we didn't use yet. And what's neat about these is that I can select this one here, which is a repeat forever, so that whatever I've coded it to do, it will keep going throughout the entire scene. So let's try it. I'm going to reset and see what that looks like. Oh, I like that a lot. So I'm going to do that for all of my snow blocks, the same pattern. Do the same for yours. All right, here's our big moment. Let's see what it looks like. I'm really happy with how my snow turned out. I hope you enjoyed coding along with me today. Thanks so much for joining me.